All right, here's how to drive a stick shift. We've got a five speed here, a uh, Ford Focus. And I've put a shirt down there and I've got my blinding white legs and white shoes. So hopefully you'll be able to see down there even though it's kind of dark. So here's how the pedals work. This is your clutch. So the clutch, when it's left alone and your foot isn't on it, the engine is connected to the transmission. When you push it down, the engine is not connected to the transmission. And somewhere in between, like halfway, is when the engine and the transmission, the clutch plates come together via spring pressure. And they're kind of rubbed together at that point, so you don't ever want to keep it in between for too long. You want to get the engine revved up and then kind of feel it catch and then let it out and then rev it up more to go. And so, of course, the middle one's your brake and the one on the right is your accelerator. This is your stick shift. One, two, three, four, five, and then reverse down low. So now let's get into the um, exactly what I'm doing and how the engine is revving. All right, so when you start the car, you always want to push down on the clutch just in case it's in gear. Some cars, if you start it and it's in gear, it'll just start rolling on you. Most of them have an electronic lockout. And so now I shift it into, can you see my shifter? Yeah, I see. So I shift it into first gear, then I give it a little bit of gas, not a lot, and I release the parking brake, which is right here. So the parking brake makes sure you don't roll when you're parked. And then just let it out gently, and then we're rolling. Now, to get into the next gear, I push in the clutch and then I rev up the engine to the right amount of RPMs to match the speed of the transmission and then I let the clutch out. So that takes a little bit of finesse getting it and then if I want to downshift then I shift down again and I use my accelerator foot to rev up the engine to match the RPMs of the transmission. So the idea is with the clutch plates when they're apart, you want to try and make them spin at the same speed rather than one of them spinning fast and then the other one not. Like if you rev it up and pop the clutch to go fast, you can hear the wheels screech, but that's terrible for your clutch because one plate is standing still and the other one's slamming up against it. And uh, your clutch is going to wear out a lot faster than if you go gentle. So gently is just put it in gear, give it a little gas, and then just kind of roll into it and then shifting gears give it a little bit of revs to match the transmission speed and you can feel how smooth that was uh, if you have a tachometer then the tachometer um, if you know how fast the road speed is in a particular gear from watching your tachometer then you can rev it up and watch the tachometer and get the speed to be about the same as you would think it should be when you're shifting into that gear. Cheap ass Ford Motor Company doesn't give me a tachometer with this car, so I've got to kind of feel it and listen to the loud <laughs> engine of the car to, to get it in sync. And your clutch will last a lot longer if you're shifting and you know exactly what RPM you're aiming for in a particular gear. All right, so, so on a car, after, after it's been going forwards, getting it into reverse, sometimes it won't want to go into reverse. And to get it to go into reverse, you push down the clutch and then kind of let the clutch out just a little bit and then it'll want to drop into reverse. That some cars will do that and some cars won't. So if you have a car that won't go into reverse, make sure that you, you just float the clutch up a little bit while you're pulling down into reverse and then you'll feel it kind of clunk into gear. Um, one of the, the most intimidating things about having a, a manual transmission car is getting stuck in traffic and being on a hill. So on a hill, you only have two feet. So you've got an accelerator foot, a brake foot, or a clutch foot, but you don't have three. Some people can kind of move the foot in between both and then cover both pedals, but remember always that you have a parking brake. So if you're on a hill, you can use the, hold on to the parking brake and then put it into gear and then as you're letting the clutch, as you're letting the clutch out, you can see I don't need to use the brake here because I've got the parking brake on. Then you rev it up, let out the parking brake, and go. A lot of people on a hill, because they're scared that they're going to roll backwards, they'll put the they'll have the clutch kind of halfway pressed in, and they'll kind of rock it back and forth with the accelerator and the clutch, and that's terrible for your clutch. That'll burn your clutch out like in no time. So don't don't ride in between on the clutch. You know, kind of where you feel the car rocking back and forth and you're just kind of sitting on a hill. You want to be spend as little time in the friction zone in between clutch in and clutch out as possible to make your clutch last as long as possible. So these are the clutch plates. This, there's a steel plate and then there's a friction plate. So you can see the friction plate has this frictional material on it and one side's connected to the engine, the other side's connected to the transmission and there are springs that make them go together. When you step on the clutch, you compress the springs, remove the two 
from touching each other and then one of them will spin the engine side and the, the transmission side won't be able to touch this and then when you let off on the clutch they slam together this friction material sticks to the metal and then your engine is connected to your transmission so when you're out here you're okay and when you're here you're okay but in between when you're shifting gears this is going one of them is going to be moving faster than the other and they're going to rub down and that's what wears out your clutch so when you're when you're in that's called the friction zone so when you're in the friction zone you want to be as gentle as possible and do as little damage as possible